So, the, so rare birds' eggs are being scrambled for Russian oligarchs, and Bill Oddy goes ape shit. He shows up at Claridge's wearing his twitchers jerkin, and the pockets are full of every conceivable explosive. I got the picture. He walks in to the uh, buffet area, the breakfast buffet. People turn round. They say, "Isn't that the man from Spring Watch?" Someone else says. It won, wasn't he once one of the goodies? Yeah, not anymore. Now he's a baddie. Seconds later, carnage. Oddy is like a bearded Catherine wheel scything through the crowd. Ironically, so the, the oligarchs wearing the leather jackets are protected from the worst of the blast, but a, an innocent couple from the northeast <laughs> on a city break are vaporised. Sorry, are you, are you asking me a specific question? Yes. And... That question is, is if, if an RSPB yeah. neo-fundamentalist yeah. was radicalised, yeah. uh, Oddie uh, sacrificed himself, yeah. and the, the rest of them holed up in Wookiee Hole and I was sent to neutralise the threat, yeah. how would I proceed? Simples. Um, um, really want to know? Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Like Hand-to-hand combat, com commando style. Do you mind if I stand up? No, please. Take the floor. Take the floor. The floor is yours. You have right. the floor. So, in uh, Special Forces, we're, we're given licence to use bespoke techniques, improvised weaponry, that sort of thing. Uh, my favourite for hand-to-hand -hand combat is this brass knuckle, which I've adapted. I've stuck a protruding blade on one side, very sharp. And what I would do is, I'd, uh, when I'd attack the first insurgent, punch him full in the face as hard as I could until I felt a splinter of bone. That his nose was truly shattered, and then as he's toppling backwards, grab hold of him with your right hand and bring my hand back with the blade like an arc across his throat, severing one or preferably both of the carotid arteries. It's, you've got to be careful here because you've got to avoid the squirt of the jet of blood because you know you don't want to be blinded moving on to the next fella. It's, it's quite weird this actually because uh, if you get it right, the, the neck opens up completely yawns back like a Muppet's mouth. Oh, my God. So then you let them drop, <laughs> take care not to trip over them. I've seen that happen. And then you repeat and adapt, 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 until the cave is clear. It's very bloody, but it's quick and it's quiet. And that's why I like it. Any questions? No. Yeah, um... A witch muppet. You rejoin us on Mid Morning Matters. Tommy Gaskell, survival expert, still with us. And on lie two, we have Sophie. Sophie, what's your tongue twister? No, love, he didn't hurt any Muppets. He simply dispatched um, some uh, terrorists from a radicalised RSPB in, in Wookiee Hole. Uh, it was simply that when he slit the throats of the bad people, they resembled the mouths of Muppets. hope that answers... Did they get better? Did they get better? We cleared the cave. No. No, no-one survived, Sophie. He cleared the cave. Did you feel bad? It's my job. No, he didn't feel bad, Sophie. Target is an Al-Qaeda cell. Four terrorists are in the building. In addition, they have as many as four hostages. Your mission is to recover the hostages. We're in two teams. A team led by Danny will secure the perimeter. B team today will include Alan. Lads. B team will enter the building through the door on the white aspect. The hostages are being held on the far side of the blue aspect. Any questions? Sir. Alan. Recommend we use night vision capability. It's 1300 hours, so no. Copy that. Questions? Open door right! I've got the rear! Open door left! With me! I've got the rear! I've got the rear! Special Forces experts agree it's important to guard the rear. Oh, 
Cartridge, give me! This was my signal. A gauntlet thrown down. We know eagles dare, but does a partridge? Left side clear, right side clear, room clear, hold! Did you see that? Did you see that? So, how do you think you did? Pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Well, you discharged your firearm correctly, all neat and tidy. Yeah, I was a sixer in the Cubs. Right, well, let's have a look at the video, shall we? Yeah, this this fourth shot, what's this stance? You, you're presenting a very wide target. Yeah, that's a, that's a recognised shooting stance. Where have you seen that before? Uh, the opening sequence of the James Bond films. Right, yeah. It's me and the boys are wondering where the hell's he got that from? And I told you, it's been the opening sequence of the James Bond films. Yeah. Straight away, I can see a fundamental problem. Your first two shots. Uh, yeah, double tap, central torso, pretty good. You've killed a hostage. Oh, Alan. Terrorist, unharmed. Hostage, dead. Terrorist, unharmed. Hostage, dead. Terrorist, unharmed. unharmed. Hostage, dead. That makes four unharmed terrorists yeah. and four hostages yeah. killed. That is suboptimal. We would call it a catastrophic failure. I mean, why did you shoot this guy? This is an Islamic terrorist cell. This guy is clearly a Sikh. Oh, come on. I mean... Do you know many Muslims that wear turbans? Simbad the sailor. Catastrophic failure. Well, well, wait a second. I was charged with incapacitating four targets and recovering four persons. Which, to be fair, I did do. The only twist was... That you save four terrorists and kill four hostages. Precisely. I mean, that, that's a good shot. Oh, I was slightly hyperventilating then. <laughs> Used to lead to the uh, lead, lead to panic attacks. Jesus, not now. Whew. What were you getting? Uh, a panic attack. Oh no, uh, the, uh, the bouquet. Uh, well, I'm. I, I'm not. It's been a while since I've used you know, wine words. Oh well, people use. All sorts of words to describe wine. I mean, yeah. you know, vanilla, melon, straw. <laughs> Surely only livestock know what straw tastes like. It's just a hint. Yeah, it's just a hint. Just a, yeah. And with wine, red wine, wines. Yeah, wines, wines have hints. No. Yeah. Uh, have a go, Alan. What did you? What did you get um, from that? Um, pe pepper. Yes. Pepper. Really? Yes. Really? It I, is I, 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 it is pe yeah, pe yeah. I mean, yeah. No, that yes, that is a very mm, that is a very peppery wine. Lots of pepper, lots of pepper. Yeah, I, I didn't even have to think of it. As soon as I brought it to my nose, bang, pepper. Um, yeah, so yeah, no, amazing. Well, you've got a good nose. Oh, you? like you. <clears throat> What's next? Mmm, mm. that's a very mmm. Oh, that's oh, now that's very familiar. Yes, now that's oh, what is it? It's, um, oh, oh, um. Currants. No, 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 no. It's. Uh, very specific. Mm. Well, it <clears throat> it's musky, so. No, no, it's... no, 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 no. No, it's it's on it's. Berries. No, the rosy. That's wrong. Sorry. Um, cherry. Cinnamon. No. no. This wine tastes of chewits. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, I've ne um, never have we, heard of chewits. Have we got any chewits? <laughs> now, this, this Chardonnay from Devon is exceptionally well balanced. Rosie, it's great. They're all great. Fantastic. Nicely fruity with a long finish. Yeah, it's... it's, it, it's what does that mean? Well, it, it long means... Long finish. It means the, the taste lingers on the palate. It does. It does. That's it lingers mm. on the palate. Absolutely. Like, like, like a lazy forklift truck driver. He he would linger on the palate. No. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Yeah. <clears throat> Keep talking. Well, um, so so it lingers on the palate, mm -hmm. and um, the taste, therefore, will will. will... Oh, Sorry, you're all right. Yeah, that's just this thing. Oh. Here. 
There you go. <laughs> just no problem. Just go on. So what are you saying? So is that taste lingering for you? And it, it, yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can still it, taste it. Definitely, yeah. yeah, still there. Well, you will. You will for some time. Yeah, it's um, it's got a it's still there. Yeah. I mean, we can't wait till the flavour goes before we carry on the conversation. Because um, it's 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 because it's a long finish. It will be there for some time. Um, no, it's gone. Cheers. So, um, cheers. <laughs> anyway, um, which of the wines did you like best, Alan? I'm curious. To know. Which is the most? What, how? What, what are the prices individually? Um, bottle, bottle to bottle, bottle to bottle. Right. Well. This one here, this comes. This is six pounds. Uh -huh. um, well, this is eight ninety-five, and this one, um, this one's quite pricey. It comes in at twelve pounds. That one is the one I think had the best flavour. Now this one, it's called White Diamond. Ooh. That's another one of Kirsty Allsop's bridesmaids. <laughs> <laughs> Did you have a drink before you came on? Mm. It's Try champagne, that. Mm. Uh, lime cordial. Mm. Big slug of Cointreau, mm. white grape juice, and egg white. Mm. Like poached egg. Oh no, no, it's raw. Mm. For God's sake, Rosie! What? You can't eat raw egg. It's a raw egg. No, it's, Rosie. A, it's a common ingredient. It's, yes. uh, sorry, just a disclaimer. Please, please don't try this at home. Rosie's attempted it here, but in controlled conditions. The first aid is on hand. Please, please cook your eggs. Be safe. Be egg safe. Rosie, Rosie, let me pick your brain. Um, because me and my mum, we mm. always go to Queen's for the tennis. Like um, the first cocktail afternoon mm. of the summer. Mm. Uh, what would you make for that? It'd have to be a rosemary champagne fizz. Oh. So gin, grapefruit and champagne. It's, it's, it's English, it's fun, it's summer. Those are the new cocktails. But what about the classics, Rosie? What do you think is the most popular cocktail in Britain? <sighs> Espresso martini. Alan, what do you think? Mine's gone blank. Shandy. Well, uh, we hit the streets of Nottingham to find out which came out on top. And we're off. That was great. Oh, I know. really, it's okay. It's okay. Smells of stuffing. Oh, it's you. Just to say, I've looked into the annual reports. Mm -hmm. And it turns out Jenny earns slightly more than you. Okay, okay. It's to do with the way the deal is structured, it's an accounting quirk. Okay. It's only about £200, but it just means she's higher than you in the list of the BBC's best paid presenters. OK, OK. Are you OK? OK. OK, I'm OK, OK. So you're in a bit of a pickle. You want more, but you don't want to complain mm. because women have got a bit big for their boots. Yeah, all right, Lynn, that's, that's for the car, but thanks for the intel. Have a white sparkle. OK, Thank places, you. people. You like egg, don't you? And we're back in five, four... So there we have it. The mojito is Britain's favourite cocktail. And Rosie, you're making us one to end the show. I am. Now, the secret to a good mojito is not to overdo the mint. Mm -hmm. So it's lime juice, sugar, a little mint. They're already in the shaker. Go on, make it, and, then. Yes, a handful of ice and a good slug of rum. Oh, I love rum. And then you give it a good shake. Stop looking at me. <laughs> Certainly gave that what for. And would you like to have a go, no, Alan? No, not me. I never know where to look when I do that sort of thing. It requires a certain kind of confidence. That, for whatever reason, I don't have. That's why I don't play the maracas. Give it here. Right. <laughs> stiff. It's loosening. It's very stiff. You got it? All right. <laughs> okay. Take me, take it. I did that. Rosie, thank you very much for joining us. That was great. It was great. It was really great. What are you doing my jacket? Sorry for bollocking you before about the raw egg thing. But don't do that again. Oh, and I believe Simon has an email. Simon. <laughs> <laughs> I love that advert. 
What, 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 give them away. away. OK, time for some more calls on... What is Alan firing his friend's air rifle into? That sound again. And again. Line 10, what am I firing my friend's air rifle into? A sandwich. Uh, wrong, line 3. The future? <laughs> Are you on an E? <laughs> line 6. Dunno. Did you call earlier? Yeah, I did. Unbelievable. Uh, line 4. Chop, chop, the nurse is here. <laughs> what the, what's, what the hell's all that about? <laughs> no idea, mate. <laughs> Seriously? <what? laughs> might, might have something to do with me. Why? It's uh, to do with something I did on the uh, on Branning show last night. Well, let's see. Move Let, on. Move on. No, let's hear move it. Move on. Let's hear it. Seriously. Uh, it wouldn't work now. It no, you work. can't deprive the listeners of mid-morning I, matters. On, the, on this occasion, I think I, I think I should. Seriously, let's hear what you did. Really? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, well, um, so, uh, Carl, so Carl Branning was under the weather, and he. Um, he had some night nurse and some uh, day nurse, and so the big joke was, you know, what, which one should he take? Because it's the night time, but he still didn't want to go to sleep. And then the callers started. It's like a the late at night. The callers are a bit more sort of uh, zany, so they start calling in and uh, with the other suggestions for nurses and people. And anyway, the point was, someone called in about a mental nurse, and then I had to. I basically was then a mental nurse for the for the next hour, just doing a you know stupid character. About this, um, about this nurse who kind of scuttles around the wards and is like putting milk into the drips and things, and she's just um, like toppling people out of uh, out of beds. And I don't really. Psychic Simon, Psychic Simon. Oh, right, don't worry about it. I'll say. Wait a minute. You've seen Duck Soup and Mark's Burst? Oh, yeah. You, you'd love that. OK, time for Traffic and Travel. Traffic and Travel. That was Alison Moye again. And now for the final choice cut of Partridge on Partridge. <laughs> Sounds like two birds copulating. Not now, mate. What about family? Got any kids? Yeah, I got a couple, male and female. Names? Denise, she's the female, and Fernando, he's uh, the other one. Love them? Just a bit. Do they listen to the show? <laughs> yes, they do. It's not what they told me. You, you don't know. What would be you know your ideal them. evening? I'll Alan. tell you what it wouldn't be. He's having a pint of bitter with a traitor. Oh, come on, Alan, give me a break. Who said I was talking about you? The world doesn't revolve around no, you. No, I'm not saying that. <laughs> You're not the moon. Yeah, I thought you said you weren't bothered. What about your favourite TV show? Deal or no deal, I'm not bothered. And why is that? Edmunds. You know, you can do what you like for all I care. It's a free country, unless they change the law. What about a favourite war? The Hundred Years. I'll tell you something else. Any reason? Pioneering use of cannons. You can make love to the guy for all I care. You know, bum time with Branning. You know, that's been legal since 67. What's your greatest yeah, strength? You give a break to uh, a, a lab assistant from uh, Secondary Modern. Your biggest weakness? Repa repays you by taking 30 pieces of Branning silver. He's not paying me, Alan. It's a, it's a metaphor. What makes you laugh? Uh, to recap... Key strength, courage, weakness, too kind, funny, YouTube, sneezing panda, enjoyed chat. I enjoyed chatting to you too, thanks, Alan. And tell Chuck when I'll pay for the dry cleaning, but he should oh, count himself lucky. something else. And the answer to what is Alan firing his friend's air rifle into is a beef tomato. And here is Mick Hucknell. Now, we've all seen it. A teenager near a window asking Siri what the weather's like. A taxi driver using his phone to calculate your change after you've given him £20 for an £18 fare. Clearly the change is £2. But is our addiction to technology actually making us less intelligent? To gauge the public mood, we cross to Simon Denton, with a slightly expanded role sifting through your texts, tweets and now live calls. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> so, yeah, bigger role, more responsibility. Yes, indeed. Finally got that promotion, Ma. Same money, though, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, we've been asking, have we lost good old-fashioned British common sense? Eustace says, pick up bits of broken glass by pressing a slice of damp bread against the floor. Very good tip. I've done that myself. Yes, just remember to bin the bread afterwards. Which I didn't do. Yes, my, my lips were lacerated. Oh, dear. My, my, my then-girlfriend wouldn't kiss me for a week. That must have been difficult. Well, you could do other stuff. Someone else who says, I avoid pet odours in my home. Um, but... Yeah, that's more of a housekeeping tip. You know, we're, we're really asking a slightly deeper question about the way we live now. You know, have we lost something? Yeah, totally. So Anita says, if you've lost the end of a roll of sellotape, 
but you're saying you mean some sort of lost something in yeah. as a society. Yeah. So the ones you selected are they all just housekeeping tips? The twi yes, the tweets are. Right. We could take a phone call. Let's do it. Calls are under social, and then no, not social. Uh, Stay calm. Hang on, I've got it here. Live, and then phone. Right, there are three phones. Just put phone. No. Yes, OK, so uh, now I think we have Stephen Tent on line four. Stephen. Stephen, are you there, Steve? Stephen Tent on line four. Go to... Steve? Go to emails? Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's fall in love. Bear with me. I wish there was a bear with you. He'd probably make a better job of it than you. <laughs> Seriously, mate. Now, there is a way of getting from here to emails. You make it sound like Fort Knox. Fort! Stephen Fort. It's not Stephen Tent on line four. It's Stephen it's Fort. It's Stephen Fort on, on line, line 10. 10. Right. right. Well, let's go find him. Come on, then. What's all the fuss about now? Let's go. Come on, let's travel. Stephen Fort on line 10. Just missed him, I think. Here's what we've got coming up for the rest of the show.